Shalom, everybody, and welcome to the YouTube channel of TorahTrue.com and RelatableTorah.com. I am your host, Rabbi Ben Sion Saloff, and uh, we are now in the middle of uh, the Testament of the Baal Shem Tov series. And uh, this is actually uh, class number 13 in the series. And last week we had, uh, we had been discussing... Uh, some very important concepts within the last couple of uh, sessions, I should say. Um, one is uh, the fact that the 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 Yetzirah, the evil inclination. Now, before I go on to to just the evil inclination, I want you to understand. I want you to keep in mind the whole concept of an inclination. We are all born with all sorts of different inclinations. Um, we may have an inclination toward um, towards overeating. Uh, we may have an inclination towards some sort of intimate practices. We have inclinations towards all different sorts of things. Some of us towards music. Some of us towards uh, art. Uh, some of us towards military things. We all have certain inclinations. Now, some of our inclinations uh, are by nature positive in general, and some of our inclinations are by nature negative in general, and some can go either way. Some can be very positive and can also be uh, the opposite, can be very negative and destructive as opposed to constructive. Now, God gave us a wonderful capability. What is that capability? The capability is that we can take any of these, each and any of these uh, strengths or inclinations, I should say, any one of these inclinations which Hashem has given us, and we can focus it in a, a, a good and positive way, or we can do the opposite, chas So, uh, with that in mind, we have to know also that there is an, uh, an overriding kind of inclination, which draws us to things which are negative and non-constructive uh, and selfish, self-centered, then there is, a, there is another inclination within us which, which pushes us towards positive, constructive, and selfless things, meaning to, to serve Hashem and to serve those around us in a, in a positive and helpful way. Okay, so that being the case, we have a little bit of a foundation to understand what is the Yetzir Hara. It is a negative, self, selfish um, uh, kind of a, an inclination which pushes us in a particular direction. And of course, we have the other opposite inclination which we need to strengthen, uh, which, which pushes, pushes us... Uh, pushes us in a positive uh, direction. Okay, now, with that in mind, let me just fix my... Uh, I, I have to be my own engineer here, so let's see. Just make sure everything is set. Okay, we're good now. And um, here we go. So, with that in mind, we, we have been uh, talking about the, the, the positive inclination... But more, we've been discussing the negative in inclination, which is the yetahara, the evil inclination. Now, the evil inclination uses all sorts of um, all sorts of machinations, all sorts of uh, schemes, in order to turn us in a direction which is not constructive for us. And uh, the the more clever we are, the more clever is our yetahara, and it is very often going to get us to, uh, it's going to try to get us, excuse me, it is going to try to get us um, to think that what we're doing is a very positive thing. In fact, no, not only a little positive, but, you know, we're the greatest if we do this thing that they say. Now, the the thing that the, the Yitzhahara will try to convince us to do very often is uh, what's called a chumra ba'alma, meaning 
you know, you're supposed to do certain as a as a Torah observant Jew, and and a Torah observant person in general, and even a non Jew can be Torah observant to the extent that they fulfill all the mitzvahs and directions that the Torah gives for people who are not Jewish. So we want to fulfill the things that are that we are commanded to do in order to be on good, it, it, uh, you know, the best possible relationship with our wondrous and kind and, and merciful Creator. So the Yetzir Hara will sometimes convince us that by doing something which is far beyond what is necessary, that we are the, we are being really super pious and we are being, you know, like the greatest. And the truth of the matter is, very often these things which go beyond what is necessary are not good. It's very If you see that this thing that you're doing, which is beyond what is necessary and beyond what you're commanded to do, is actually negative. It can have effects like uh, hurt your relationships in your family. And look, the, the, the main barometer to know whether what you're doing has a uh, is is a, a machination of the Yetzir Hara or it is not is does it bring you to have atzvut does it bring you that now this is not the only barometer but it's a very important one does it bring you sadness or depression if it brings you sadness or depression it is wrong stop it because one of the the, the main one of the main principles of serving Hashem is simcha. You should serve Hashem with joy. You should be happy in your serving Hashem and the the opportunity to serve Hashem and, and in everything that you do to serve Him, you should be besimcha. You should be happy. Now, um, so if this thing that the Yetzirah or, or that you 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 think is is the, a wonderful great thing, but it, and it's far beyond the what is necessary to do. If you think it's such a great thing. Maybe it is a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. You have to figure it out for yourself, or you have to come to, to you know somebody who's experienced, and you, you can ask them. But one good personal barometer is simcha, is joy, because the best characteristic you can have in serving Hashem is joy. The worst is sadness and depression. So these things I wanted to give you a, a little bit of a uh, foundation. Um. So, just recapping, a stringency in, in what you're doing can be good and it can be very bad. So, you have to be careful about those stringencies, those chumras. Uh, okay, so now we're going to get into the, into the text. And even if you know, look... Your Yetzir Hara is trying to get you to do, uh, trying to get you upset that that you didn't do uh, something. Whether if it's a chumra or if it's an actual mitzvah that you were supposed to do and you didn't, you didn't do, the, the Yetzir Hara is going to try to get you depressed about it. So even if there's something that you didn't do and it was an actual mitzvah and you made the mistake and you didn't do it, Lo you should not be get depressed. Don't get depressed over it. You should remember that the 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 Creator, blessed be He, searches the hearts and minds of each person. He knows where we're coming from. He knows where we are mentally, emotionally, obviously physically. He knows that really what you want to do is you want to do the best. You, you want to make sure that you serve him in the best possible way. However, at that particular point, you weren't able to do so. You know, for whatever reason. And, and, and in that way, and at that time, you strengthen yourself in your, uh, in your, your serving the, the Creator with joy. So, look, sometimes we mess up. For whatever reason, we're tempted, we're this, we're that, whatever it is. But sometimes we screw up. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, nobody's perfect. 
so the the answer is then you realize you made a mistake and and you have to cut you have to also realize that Hashem knows Hashem knows your thoughts he knows your 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 feelings he knows everything and Hashem is going to give you a pass so to speak if he if if your heart is is um if your heart truly regrets not having done, served Hashem properly, you do tshuva, Hashem is giving you a pass. He's letting you go. Not only that, He'll put you in an even better state, so to speak, a, a, a spiritual state, than you are before you did the, the sin. So don't listen to the Yetzirah the, or, or these feelings of sadness or depression that come upon you when, you're, when you don't think that you're serving Hashem properly. You know, just be happy you're serving Hashem and try to serve Hashem in the best way that you can. And not more. <laughs> okay. Uchmosh katuv, and like it's written, Eit la'asot la'ashem, heferu Torah techa. So it, it says it is, uh, it is a time to do for Hashem. We have voided His Torah. Because there are times, sometimes, when we when there's a mitzvah, which seems to have with it uh, an intimation of avera, a little bit of of sin attached to it. Um. So we don't uh, we don't um, let me let me go a little bit further because it's better to combine these. Um the uh, Hello in Kavanati but uh uh mitzvah la chisat la bore yit parach gam lo lichvodi ani yose mitzvah zo. So, basically it's saying like this. I'm not, I'm not doing what I'm doing here for my own honor, and this, this particular mitzvah, which, which seems maybe I'm doing it wrong, maybe I'm doing it in a sinful way, chas v'sholom, if I knew that, and if I know that the Creator doesn't want me to do this, this mitzvah, or doesn't want me to do it in this way, or whatever it is, you know, I wouldn't do it. I certainly wouldn't do it. And Hashem knows that. My purpose is not to get myself all, you know, uh, into a great uh, condition, you know, up in heaven and this, that, and the other thing. My whole purpose for doing this mitzvah is just to give, bring pleasure to Hashem. I want to bring nachat to Hashem, nachas ruach. And um, that's why I do it, not for my own honor, not for anything else. Uvazei yistalek hayetzah haram imeno bezrat Hashem. So through doing this and taking this attitude and, and facing these situations in this way, you are going to cause the Yetzirah to, to, to depart from you and not hold sway over you. It's, the more you do it, the, the more you have this ability to, to uh, cause the Yetzirah to depart, for the most part, and to have less and less uh, sway over you, strength over you, if you always do this. אבל מכל מקום צריך להבחין בשכלו אם יעשה המצווה הזאת אם לא. So, but nevertheless, you, you really have to look at yourself carefully and see, did, did I, should I have done this mitzvah? And if I should have, you know, did I do it? Did I not do it? What's, what's the situation? You don't want to be, um, you know, you don't want to just be uh, impulsive. You, you want to look at your situation, look at what mitzvah Hashem puts in front of you, and you do the mitzvah. 
and you do it in a in a positive and a, and a joy joyful way. V'chol ma she katavti, and everything that I've written, meaning the the Baal Shem Tov, heim klalim dolim v'nechmadi mi pazra. They are uh, great general principles, and and dear general principles more so even than refined gold. Each and every item that we've discussed and we are discussing, these are very, uh, these are very, very great general principles. And general pr principles for what? General principles in our service of Hashem, which translates really into our daily conduct with people and with Hashem and, and with ourselves. Okay. Next. Ita beharbe. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh oh. Ita harbe asu kerashbi velo al tabiadan. It is written that many people tried to conduct themselves like Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai, the great uh, Tana, the great uh, Mishnaic sage, and also known to be the author of the uh, Zohar Akadosh, the Holy Zohar, the Lo Al Tabi Adam, and they, they were never able to accomplish this. They wanted to be like the Rashbi, but they weren't able to. Hakavana he she hayu rotsim lasot latzmam sigufim kdeshi avo lamadrega Rashbi. What was their intent? What did they do? They 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 went and they wanted to, you know, to afflict themselves with these mortifications in order that they could reach the great level of the Rashbi, to the Rabbi Shimon. And, and through this, they, it never came to them. You can't just expect that you're going to reach such a high, high level by just by uh, afflicting yourself with mortifications, etc., the with terrible, you know, long fasts and terrible, you know, like people have even uh, thrown themselves naked into the into the the snow when it's you know below zero weather in order to afflict themselves to bring themselves you know to a higher level. I think the only thing it brings them to is is a cold and a flu. But in any case, I shouldn't get like that because there there were truly great people who did things like this. However. Most of the people who do things like this, I think, are misguided. And, and it's not the most positive uh, and constructive way you can do things. And once again, he comes to this, this foundational principle. What is the purpose of, of serving? What is the kavana, the, the intent and the purpose? When you're serving Hashem, it is only to give pleasure to Hashem. Nahat Ruach. And as they say in Yiddish, Nachas. Shep Nachas. You give pleasure to Hashem. That should be your purpose for serving Hashem in any individual aspect of your service. Should be for giving pleasure to Hashem. The low Shiavo Madrega. And it shouldn't be that you should reach some high and lofty level. You know, okay, I'm, next week I'm going to fast every single day, only drink, and only eat on Shabbos. Only eat on Shabbat. Do you think this is a good thing? In our generation, very few people have the, the strength to be able to do this and still function properly and serve Hashem and serve Him with joy. It's, it's, it, if not impossible, it's almost impossible. It's not something reasonable and rational to do. You want to serve Hashem? Do so besimcha. Do so with joy, and and you know focus on bringing him joy, bringing joy to Hashem, bringing pleasure to Hashem. Okay. Keshehu roe shavodato gedola mechavero lo yitkae chasusholom. When you see that your service of Hashem is apparently greater. Uh, and, and more uh, more powerful and desirable to Hashem, it, at least according to your your view, uh, than another person's. Don't be you know don't get conceited uh, about your you know that you're better than that person. Chas heaven forbid. Kedita 
באותיות רבי עקיבא, ועל יום הבליבו אני גדול מחברי. And it, as it is written in a, a medrash called Otiot de Rabbi Akiva, which means the letters of Rabbi Akiva, uh, not letter as in something, you know, as a, a missive. I'm talking about the individual letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, but in that, in that sefer, with the wisdom of Rabbi Akiva, it says, uh, do not in, in any way uh, think in your, in your heart that you are greater than your friend. And he, uh, somebody like this saying that, it really makes an impression, it really hits home, because Rabbi Akiva was the greatest of all the sages, probably, you know, arguably. Um, there's a medrash which speaks about how Moshe Rabbeinu went lema'ala with Hashem, went above, uh, he ascended in a spiritual ascension, and, and this was before he, he passed away, uh, and uh, Hashem showed him all the great leaders down throughout the generations. And when he came to Rabbi Akiva, he said to Hashem, why would you give the Torah through me when you have one as great as this? Referring to Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva was one of a tremendous wisdom and humility and all of, all of the, the characters we should emulate and prize. And Rabbi Akiva himself said, don't, don't, the, this great man said, don't consider yourself any uh, greater than any of your friends, because you're not. Your whole purpose for Hashem is not to bring yourself up, but it is uh, to bring Hashem, you know, joy, and, and bring pleasure to Hashem. Uh, okay. Number 49. And another important general principle, When people come to ridicule you for your, for your, you know, uh, your prayer with, with deep felt, um, with deep felt uh, kavana, with deep felt intentions, and uh, with your other, any other type of service of Hashem, whether, you know, you're learning, whatever it is, people come to make fun of you, don't answer them. You don't answer them. Even if they come and they, not making fun of you, but they're actually praising you for your, for your service of Hashem, which, you know, I happen to be very into prayer and into davening. Um... So people have said to me, oh, your davening is this, your davening is that. I don't answer them. I, as every, I used to joke around with them, you know, but the truth of the matter is, uh, the best thing to do, which I've, I've gotten into the habit of most of the time, is just not answering. You know, smiling a little bit and, and, and not answering. Because that really is the best way to conduct yourself when, pe when a person is coming and commenting on your service of Hashem. Um, Kedei shlo yavo lidei machloket, lidei gavhut mishkachat haborei yitbara. So, and so you don't want to come, because this is, uh, the reason we do this is in order that we don't be, it come to uh, machloket, like, uh, disagreement let's say somebody says to you oh you're you're praying so well and you say oh thanks somebody else will say oh come on he's not praying properly he's you know he's just making whatever he's he's acting like he is and then this could come to machloket this could come to disagreements among people and we don't want to do that um and also it it could bring a person uh it, to uh, forgetting Hashem through their uh, lack of humility, through their conceited way in which they take that sort of uh, uh, criticism, that sort of, or that sort of uh, compliment or whatever. Va'amar Azal and our sages, sages of blessed memory said, "Shtikato shel adam neviatoli de anava." A person's silence brings them to humility, and humility is really the greatest uh, uh, pro, uh, greatest characteristic 
that a person can exhibit. Humility is very important. And uh, like I tell my father, or like I tell my wife, I should say, I have plenty of humility. Don't worry, I've got lots of it. <laughs> Only kidding. In any case, thank you all for coming. Uh, and uh, if you uh, if you look down there, I think it's either there or there, <laughs> you'll see uh, the a place where you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please do so and you will receive uh, notifications of new classes coming up. Uh, I will be... Uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, very positive things in, in the works right now. One of which is we're going to... Uh, when we can get a hold, a hold of the right things and, and learn how to use them properly, we're going to have also a microphone, which will make the audio better, a better camera, um, and... Uh, we're going to be putting out uh, essays which correspond to certain of our classes. Lots of things in the works. Um, I will be going to Eretz Yisrael soon, and when I'm there, I'm going to be working a lot of the time on uh, on um, ramping up our, our classes and, and the quality of, of our production. In any case, thank you all so much for coming. I hope you've enjoyed the class. Um, have a wonderful week, uh, a beautiful bright and uh, happy and inspiring Shabbos. And uh, Hashem bless you with all sorts of good, revealed good, in, in spiritual or in material and spiritual matters. All the very best. God bless you.